Yo, what is good, Jets Nation? Welcome back to Jets Media. This is Richie, and in this video, I'm gonna give you guys the report from OTAs today. The media was in attendance, so we get a good idea of what's going on at One Jets Drive at OTAs. As you guys know, last week, the New York Jets media was there, so we got a good understanding of what's going on, and today, the media was in attendance, so we can finally talk about what's going on once again at One Jets Drive. So before we get into the video, I just want to mention if you guys are new to Jets Media, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And if you want to check me out over on Instagram and Twitter, that is at NYJets underscore media. And if you enjoy the video, please don't forget to thumbs it up. And also a quick note about Jets Media Day. If you guys are interested, I'll leave all the information down below to contact me for payment. I got a lot of tickets still available and I've got over 70 people signed up. So if you guys are interested, make sure you guys let me know uh, via email or DMing me. So with that being said, let's get right into today's practice and what we can take away from it the most. So first and foremost, let's talk about Zach Wilson. Uh, Zach Wilson, he started off the day a little slow. Uh, I think the first 11 on 11 period is one of five and the offense was not really clicking and he was throwing the ball all over the place. But then he really uh, connected on a bunch of well, routes with Elijah Moore, with Braxton Berrios, with Corey Davis. And all of a sudden he got into a rhythm and DJ uh, had a tweet saying that he looks calm. He looks decisive. And that's all you want to see from Zach Wilson in OTAs. When we're as a Jets fan base looking at OTAs, especially OTAs compared to training camp, all we want to see when, it, when we're talking about Zach Wilson in the quarterback position is does he have a good grasp of where to go with the football? Is he thinking too much? Is, his, is the ball out of his hand right when his back foot's hitting the ground? And that's exactly what's happening from Zach Wilson. So again, you can't really read too much into OTAs. You can't read, you know, is he throwing interceptions? Is the ball inaccurate? Is the ball, you know, this, this, and that. It's really hard to really take anything away from June, right? It's June 1st. Uh, so you can't really read too much into it. But, but at the same time, what you want to hear from the Jets beat team that's there watching these practices is, is Zach Wilson calm? Is he decisive is he thinking quickly is he processing things is he you know accurate with the football those are the type of things that you really want to see from zach wilson early in otas that's exactly what we're seeing from zach wilson early on so that's definitely a positive note um but at the end of the day we're really going to be able to see what Zach Wilson is doing in year number two on training camp comps, especially when he goes up against, you know, joint practices. Um, I'm pretty sure we're versus the Atlanta Falcons this year when it comes to uh, joint practices. So good news from Zach Wilson. But overall, the offense did struggle today. The starting defense got the best of the offense in today's 11 on 11 drills. And that's a good sign. I know that a lot of people, whenever I'm making these reports about OTAs, what we're getting from all these beat reporters, you know, something good happens. Like, for example, the defense and Sauce Gardner gets a good play but it's like, wait, is that a good thing? Because the wide receiver wasn't open and Zach threw the ball this. Well, guys, we have both an offense. We have a, both a defense to play good football. They both need to be making plays. We cannot just allow, you know, the us as a fan base to be happy when the Jets offense does something well because that means the defense is getting torched. We need to get highlights and some good plays on both sides of the ball. I had to say that because I know a lot of people are always like, wait, is this a good or bad thing that there was an interception, right? But Getting into what happened, um, DJ had this cool uh, tweet to say, sauce alert. He had a cool pass deflection in the red zone going up against Corey Davis. Um, so, and that, that brings me into my next point that I want to talk about in this video about Sauce Gardner. Um, Robert Sala spoke to the media this morning. He, had, he said something that is definitely going to grab some headlines, and he even said that as well, um, that Sauce Gardner has to earn the starting job from Bryce Hall. So Bryce Hall is currently the starting corner heading into OTAs. And listen, this is not really anything that we should be concerned about. It's not anything that shocks me, to be honest. This is something called giving the rookie an opportunity to go out there and win the job because you don't want to be a coaching staff that oh he's drafted fourth overall let's just gift you the starting job on a silver platter and you'll just win it right you want to give sauce Gardner a competition where he goes out there and he has a sense of urgency to try to win that job back and also to be honest with you guys bryce hall deserves to be a guy that goes into otas to be the starter he deserves an opportunity to try to fight for that job and guys listen i know sauce Gardner will be the starting corner by week number one so don't you guys get worried right all I'm trying to say is Bryce Hall had such a great season last year for the New York Jets that it does not shock me. And I'm actually happy that the New York Jets are going with this route of giving Bryce Hall the starting opportunity right now early in OTAs and for Sauce Garner to try to earn his way and win that job from Bryce Hall because... I feel like Hall is a guy that is a starting corner in this league, but it's pretty crazy that this cornerback room for the New York Jets is now so deep to the point where Bryce Hall is most likely going to be coming off the bench for this Jets team. I think that Bryce Hall is a starting caliber corner in this league, and I feel like if he was on any other team, he'd be a starting 
uh, cornerback. But it just so happens that the New York Jets went out there and signed DJ Reed and drafted Sauce Gardner. So Bryce Hall will most likely be coming off the bench. But like I said, it's not something that Jets fans should be like, what? Sauce is not a starter already? Bryce Hall does not deserve to start over him? No. Bryce Hall played really good football last year. He's a professional. Robert Sala has a lot of respect for him. So he has every single right to play with the first team right now. And for Sauce Garner being the rookie to try to win that job back. And I feel like Sauce will be that starting corner by training camp if I had to predict that. Um, another thing that's interesting is Jason Pinnock. The rookie from last year's draft class is getting a lot of playing time in training camp at safety. If you guys remember last year, he started uh, at the safety position the last two or three weeks and kind of impressed. He was drafted as a cornerback and he was one of those rookies last year that kind of got lost. He didn't really have any opportunities. He didn't play well when his name was called at the cornerback room. So what the Jets did is they transitioned him to a safety because we had so many injuries at the position last year and he flashed. And now all of a sudden, Jason Pinnock, he's getting a lot of playing time. Uh, LaMarcus Joyner was not with the Jets last week uh, for whatever reason, and Jason Pinnock was the starting safety with the first team. Now, today, LaMarcus Joyner was back. He was at OTAs today, and he is the starting safety for the New York Jets. He was playing with the ones. So Jason Pinnock looks like that he's going to be the backup safety behind LaMarcus Joyner, and I absolutely love that. I feel like if Jason Pinnock can develop and become a safety for this team that can provide depth, come in on certain packages, and be a guy that's quality, a quality player on this team, then that draft class last year gets even better because Brendan Eccles and Michael Carter II are already really two studs at the cornerback positions from last year's draft class. Brendan Eccles going into your number two, coming off the bench. Michael Carter II, he's going into your number two, being a starting uh, slot cornerback. So if Jason Pinnock can become a really good, you know, quality uh, safety option for the Jets, if one of those players goes down with an injury, absolutely sign me up. So I love that Jason Pinnock, he transitions to the safety position, and that's going to do so much for this Jets team if he can develop and become a viable option at the safety position. Because I think we all know that the safety position is the one position group on this team that has a lot of question marks especially depth wise jordan whitehead i absolutely love lamarcus joiner i love if he's healthy but outside of those two players if you look at the depth chart at the safety position it is not looking good obviously we have ashton davis who is trying to find his way in the in this league going into year number three elijah riley he showed flashes last year will parks you know undrafted free agents like tony adams um so the safety position is thin so if jason pinnock can establish himself as a player with upside and can really become a quality player in this league that's only a positive for the new york jets going into the 2022 season so there wasn't really a lot to talk about in otas today you know connor hughes said it was a slow day um not really too much to break down the one takeaway that everyone is getting from the uh, ota practice today is that the starting defense got the best of the starting offense or some rust and that's expected early in otas um another thing i want to mention before we uh, end off the video about what robert sala said today to the media he was asked about denzel mims and he said something interesting that he is in excellent shape and he is really in a way better uh, headspace right now than he was last year obviously going into year number two of the system and a rich Tamini asked him well was denzel mims shape ever in question and he had a good answer robert sala said well this is the first time denzel mims doesn't have a sickness he doesn't have a hamstring issue he's finally getting into that lower half uh ability where Robert Sala said that it's such an underrated ability for a wide receiver to have that lower half being strong and in shape and that's exactly what you're seeing from Denzel Mims so he's explosive right now and he's trying to get a good grasp of the offense and if Denzel Mims can really become a player that can provide quality depth and provide big time impact when his name is called this year that's only going to help out this offense tremendously because we all know unfortunately that the injuries follow the new york jets everywhere they go but let's hope that does not happen this year so that's all the takeaways i took from today's otas from robert Sala's press conference from all the tweets we got from the jets beat team of dj and connor hughes let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section i'd love to hear what you guys have to say and uh, don't forget to like the video if you guys enjoy i appreciate each and every one of you guys uh let's go jets and i'll catch you guys in the next video peace